Hey people and welcome to this next part of my series about tuning the drums. This video is all about tuning the snare drums. I want to show you the different methods and want to give you all the tools necessary so at the end of this video you are able to use them to your advantage to achieve your perfect snare drum sound. Quickly again, we use just one microphone which is mounted on the top of the camera. So everything you hear is the actual sound of the drums in this room at the position where the camera stands. So let's start right away. Just like with the Tom Toms, we start from scratch. So at first we take off the head. For this we at first have to remove the snare wires. With these pure sound wires we just have to remove those pins. With most other manufacturers you have to remove the wires and the straps from the mounting entirely. So now we take off the head. I lower the tension step by step, so I won't put too much pressure on just one single lug and maybe even damage the shell. The head is usually not reusable because this head is very very thin and adjusts to the bearing edge. So if we don't place it on the exact same spot again, we have to use a new head. Again we put the hoop on the ground with a little twist so the screws will tilt and don't fall out. Now we check the bearing edge with our finger and if we feel some kinks or some bumps we even it out with some very very fine sandpaper. If your bearing edge is seriously damaged or warped you should give the drum to a professional drum builder for repair. Here we can see the so-called snare bed. That's the area where the bearing edge is a little lower, a little bit deeper than on the rest of the shell. This is due to uh, the snare wires because here the straps of the snare wires go over the bearing edge. If you don't have a snare bed, the snare wires would not perfectly align with the bottom head. So the snare bed makes sure that the snare wires always have contact with the resonant head. The snare bed is also the reason why we can reuse the bottom head. It's very thin and it stretches a lot and aligns itself with the bearing edge. And the bearing edge is not symmetrical, so it warps a little bit and we shouldn't reuse a warped head. So we start with a fresh head, in this case one by Aquarian. We make sure it lies flat on the bearing edge and put on the hoop. Make sure that you align the opening in the snare bottom hoop exactly with the mounting for the snare wires. Because this time I switched out the hoop, I also have to switch the screws. If you transfer the screws, make sure that you won't lose the washers. Again I insert the screws just with my fingers and make sure that they only just touch the rim. In this case we don't apply pressure in the middle of the head because the snare rezzo head is very very thin and it can hold a lot of tension but only if it's intact and not damaged in any way. Because it's so thin it will stretch anyway. Now we have tightened the head just with our fingers so we have a very even starting point so we can apply more pressure by using the tuning keys. I will start by adding half a turn on every screw. I will not do this very methodically by going in a star-like pattern because it's just half a turn. This half turn only counts from the point where the screws start to grip. The snare rezzo head can and should be tuned very high. So I would suggest that from the point where the screws start to grip you add at least two whole turns on every lug. A high pitched rezzo head is such a big factor for a good snare drum sound and it is often neglected. So just increasing the tension of the rezzo head might already give you the sound you're looking for. I would always start with that. In the last part I showed you the three basic methods with which we can tighten the head and tune the drum. 
With the snare razor head, I would not recommend using the wrinkle method because with this, we have to apply a lot of pressure in the middle of the head. And as I said, we want to make sure that it's not damaged or warped in any way. I would recommend using the tone methods where you hear the tone, the pitch of every individual lug and compare and then adjust those which are too low or too high. But as I said, the head is very sensitive, so we shouldn't stroke the head with the stick or even the tuning key. So this is why I just use my finger like this. Make sure that you always hit with the same power and at the exact same spot so you can compare the pitch of the different lugs. Let's find the biggest outliers at first. Because I suggest tuning the reso head of the snare very high, let's correct the lowest screws upwards. While doing this, I dampen the other head with my hand so it won't resonate and we only hear the pitch of the head we try to tune. You can also just put it on your drum stool. Because with a drum you have a lot of overtones, it's often very hard to hear which tone is higher and which one is lower. So keep in mind, the most important tip is sing the most dominant pitch you hear. If you sing it aloud to yourself, it's much easier to hear the difference. And just like with everything, it takes some practice and it will train your hearing. Because of the snare bed, you probably have to add extra pressure on the four screws surrounding the snare bed because the bearing edge is much lower. So you have to put more tension on here in order to achieve the same pitch on every screw and to make sure that the very elastic rezo head sits perfectly on the bearing edge so the straps of the snare can go over the bearing edge without any distance and the snares are perfectly aligned with the rezo head. You can also use your finger to feel if the head is already very close and aligned to the bearing edge or if there is a little bit of a distance. Then you have to add at least one whole turn off the tuning key here. Now the head is in tune, so we will mount the snare wires. With this pure sound model, we just have to put the wires on the head and reinsert these pins. The strap even has a scale, so we can remember the exact adjustment. The great thing about this is that just once we have to find the perfect adjustment and center the snare wires and after that we can just take it off and put it back on and have the same position as before. So it's retainable and reproducible. In case you have a classic version of the snare wires without these pins, I will now show you how to mount it. For that we at first take it off completely. We loosen those two screws on each side and pull out the strap or the strings. Next, we put the lever of the snare strainer in the fixed position, but loosen the screw for the fine tuning all the way. Now we put the wires on the head and insert the straps or the strings into the mounting. Make sure that the distance from the wires to the bearing edge or the hoop is a little bit bigger on that side where the strainer is than on the other side where it's fixed. That's because the wires will stretch once we increase the tension and we want the wires to be exactly in the middle of the snare drum head. It's hard to center the wires perfectly the first time because each one stretches to a different degree and every one of us has a different taste and likes to play with a different tension than the next person. So just try it out and see how much your snare wires stretch and then readjust it so the snare wires will be perfectly in the middle of the rezo head. Now the wires are attached on one side and the strainer is in the fixed position. 
Now we fix it on the side of the snare strainer while pulling just a little bit on the end of the strap or the cords. By doing this we now just have a little bit of tension on the snare wires and by using the screw for the fine adjustment we can increase it until we are satisfied with the tension and the sound that it produces. And here just a quick tip in case you want to just tune the reso head and don't take off the snare wires entirely. Just take a stick and place it underneath the snare wires and let it rest on both sides of the hoop. This way the wires won't touch the head and you have both hands free for tuning. Now to the batter head. Again we start from scratch, I took off the head and now we put on a new one, a single ply coated. Of course there are a lot of very specific drum heads, especially for the snare drum, but with a single ply head we at first have the most options, we have the biggest range of sounds. And if it sounds too open we can always dampen it, that's much easier than the other way around. Again we start by inserting the screws with our fingers, just enough so they barely touch the hoop and still wobble a little bit. Then we push in the middle of the head to center it and again tighten the screws all the way so they touch the hoop. This way we have a quite even starting position. In this case I mix the different methods which we talked about in the last video. I start with the wrinkle method which means that I push in the middle of the drum head and then I try to eliminate the wrinkles by increasing the tension of those screws where I see the most wrinkles. We have now eliminated all the wrinkles, so this is as far as we can get with this method. But the pitch is still very low and I like to tune my snare drum pretty high. So we have to switch to another method. Because with the wrinkle method we can be pretty confident that all the tuning rods have the same tension, we can now just increase it uniformly without listening to the individual pitches of the screws and still maintain a pretty even tension around the head. I increase the tension step by step, half a turn on each screw all the way around. You can see that I change the tension of the snare wires between the steps. That's because all the parameters we can change on the snare drum are interdependent. Sometimes the desired sound is only a matter of tension of the snare wires. So between the steps I look if I can get my desired sound just by changing this parameter and if I don't I try to get it by tuning. More on the snare tension later. You see that I don't try to get the head in tune by comparing the pitches of the individual screws. That's because in the end our ear decides if we like the sound. And if we can get our desired sound just by increasing or decreasing the tension of the entire head, why should we look for the individual pitches and get the snare in tune? Just when I have the desired pitch but the overall sound doesn't satisfy me, maybe there are some overtones I don't like, then I try to get the head in tune. We try to find a great sound and not just do the methods by the book. One factor that influences the sound of your snare drum, which is often overlooked, is the tension of the snare wires. 
at almost every snare drum you have this um, this little pin here which you can turn to alter the tension of the snare wires and the tighter it is the less sustain you have and the less snare bus as well and the lower it is of course the more sustain and the more snare bus you get and the more um, sound of the snare. So if you play a soft and slow song with a little bit of sustain you just lower the tension and if it's followed in your set list by a faster song which where you want to have a tight and short snare drum sound you just increase the tension and there you have a quick way to alter the character of your snare drum um, between each song however you like. In order to really hear the difference that the tension of the snare wires makes I have recorded this with the same snare in my studio. You will hear that with a more loose tension, the ghost notes will sound a little bit warmer and a little bit more airy. You will also hear that the press rolls will sound a little bit more fluid because the longer sustain of the more open drum will hide the small inaccuracies and thus melt it together a little bit. I will show it to you in three different tunings and you will see that the tension of the snare wires has a different effect in every tuning. And you will hear that the higher the tension, the more focused, clear and a little bit higher the snare will sound. I like to play the snare very open with a very low tension of the snare wise, but when I practice I prefer a very high tension because this way I can precisely hear all my small mistakes and inaccuracies and thus I have a better feedback to improve my playing.
So far we have tried to get an even tension on all tuning screws. But that's not always necessary and not always the best solution. Sometimes it just sounds better when one or two tuning screws are out of tune. And there are even some special asymmetrical tuning methods and I want to show you one of them. I learned this one from Udo Masov. He has a great YouTube video on this tuning method and also a great DVD called The Drum Tuning Revolution. But I hope he doesn't mind if I quickly show you this method here. Again we start by making all the screws finger tight. Then we increase the general tension of the head. For this we increase the tension for one turn on each screw. I always take the two opposing ones and go in a circle. We only start counting from the point where the screws start to grip. This is what the drum sounds like now. As a starting position this is a little bit too low, so I add another half turn. By the way you see me holding the screw where I started with index finger and thumb. This is just a little reminder for me so I can remember where I started and I know when I have gone all the way around. From here we increase the tension of the screw on the 12 o'clock position for one turn. And we increase the tension of the ones left and right to it for half a turn. On our side we now decrease the tension of the screws at the 5 and the 7 o'clock position one and a half turns. This may result in them being completely loose. And then we loosen the screw on the 6 o'clock position entirely. You may and should see wrinkles, which earlier we tried to avoid and even eliminate. But in this case they serve a function. We have a lot of tension on the head, but the wrinkles dampen the overtones which occur on the edge of the drum. So that's what the drum sounds like now. So we have a lot of attack, but a very short and dry sound. Now if we want to have more sustain, we just increase the tension of the screw on the 6 o'clock position. And if we want even more sustain, a high, bright, funky sound, we just increase the tension of the three screws on our side which we loosened before. So with this method of tuning you can change the whole character of your drum with these three screws in a very short time. This is very handy when live for example you play songs from different genres in quick succession. So we can quickly switch from a high bright funky sound to a deep and dry rock sound. And you can also just do it the same way I showed you with a snare drum with just 8 tuning screws. If it doesn't give you the desired result, maybe experiment a little. Maybe try increasing the tension of the two top screws and lowering the two tuning screws on your side. Every drum reacts differently. Don't try to do it by the book. Use this method, apply it to your certain situation, maybe change it and always let your ears guide you. There's one more factor which influences your sound and that's the hoop. Uh, we have different kinds of hoops. Uh, mainly we have these 
flanged hoops versus die cast hoops. And this is a special hoop. This is the sound hoops hoop with this um, mounting for the sound hoops microphones. Let's just hear how they sound. You can hear that this one is, uh, sounds very muffled. This one as well, a little, little more open. This is uh, the most open of those three. And um, this is as well how they influence the sound. So this may make your drum sound a little bit more open, more resonant, and this a little bit more controlled. Uh, and this probably as well even more controlled. Also, um, those are more flexible. The die cast hoops are very stiff. So if you look at um, methods of tuning where each tension rod has a uh, different tension, not, not the same tension, the same tone, this is not possible with die cast hoops as they are so stiff and rigid. Uh, you need the flexibility of flanged hoops. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, die cast hoops have a very great sound for rim shots and rim clicks as well. And um, if your drum sounds a little thin and you want a little bit of fat, uh, thicker uh, snare drum sound, maybe just switch to a die cast tube. This uh, can make a big impact of the sound of your drum. Just experiment with different hoops and keep in mind that they influence uh, your sound uh, pretty, pretty much. All right, that's it for today. Everything about the snare drum. Now, again, it's up to you. You have to practice all those methods and see what works for you. And maybe on the way, you have some epiphanies for yourself. Maybe you find some interesting new methods, then please tell me about it in the comments. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. Also check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below and I will see you in the next video. Take care, goodbye.